Hello, and welcome to the fourth tutorial on using Foxdot, where we'll be looking at how to use the play synth def. I should probably have started off looking at the other synth defs, but I think this one is a bit more fun, so I decided to do it first. So, in Foxdot, there are player objects, such as P1, uh, and also ones you can define yourself, but P1 is, uh, uh, is defined when you start up Foxdot, uh, and you tell them to play music using an instrument, uh, which we call a synth def. Usually, you start by giving your player object a list of pitches, um, but the play synth def, uh, we give it a string of characters where each character is mapped to a different sample, like so. Rather than being mapped to just one sample by itself, uh, each character is mapped to a folder of samples known as a sample bank and just plays the first one it comes across. To specify a different sample in the folder, you can use the sample keyword. And we can give it a list of integers. Um, you want some more variation. The string itself gets parsed uh, and it looks for brackets in the string um, which specify certain behaviors. So a round bracket laces the pattern. So here on the first playthrough it's going to play the kick drum, the map to the X, on the first step of the sequence, and the second loop through, it'll play it on the second step of the sequence. And we can use different length um, sub patterns to get a bit more variation in, in our rhythms. So square brackets, uh, these squish uh, multiple events into one event duration. So here, these two hi-hats, which are mapped to hyphens, uh, get squished into the duration of one normal step. squish any number into uh, yeah, one normal step's duration. And we can use the round brackets and square brackets together uh, to create even more complex patterns. So something along the lines of, I don't know. If you want complete randomness, you can use curly brackets um, and it'll just play one of the items in the brackets uh, when it gets to it. So if I put a few things in here, like a snare drum, kick drum, uh, multiple hi-hats. just pick one from random, so that will give you a lot of variation. If we want to play uh, multiple patterns at once, we can either create a new, or uh, use an another player object and just give it another pattern. Or we can layer patterns together. And we layer patterns together by using the ampersand or the and symbol. 
So a pattern like zero, one, two, and like three or four. You can see here in the console, it groups together zero and three, one and four, two and three, zero and four, one and three, and then two and four. So it sort of goes through all the possibilities. Um, so you can use that to make chords out of multiple patterns if you're doing it uh, in one of the other synth thefts. But here we're going to use it to map to a uh, group two pattern strings together. So you have to make sure the strings are wrapped in these pattern brackets. So if I do it like this, uh, you can see the X and a space and then a hyphen and an asterisk. It maps it all together. And that, so if this pattern here is what's actually going to get played. So it'll play two things simultaneously. should say we can apply effects to these so if you want to the good thing about putting uh, two patterns together in the same player object is that if you want to have the same effect so room which is reverb between zero and one we can apply it to both <laughs> filter on it yeah. uh, and it just means you can put effects uh, and things on two patterns at the same time which makes life a bit easier uh, one more thing before I end this tutorial, something to look out for. Um, so this is our pattern, so our, our drum beat here, okay? Sounds fine, but I want to get a bit more depth out of it. So one thing I like to do is uh, play each sample at slightly different playback rates and separate those into the left and right channels. So if I want to put these effects on it, I can use round brackets um, to make sure these effects happen at the same time. So rather than doing sort of 0.9 and 1, which will play the playback rates uh, 0.9 and 1 in turn, I put them in round brackets and I'll play, it, play them together. I then specify the pan uh, again in, in round brackets to play together. Uh, as minus one and one. Minus one is the left channel and one is the right channel. And what you'll hear is a bit more meaty uh, drum beat. Now what you might have noticed is that the hi-hats in the square brackets go from the left to right pan. So what's happening is that this here, when it's parsed, it creates a group like this, uh, sort of like doing a delay like that. So if I play like this, they're all delayed, you'll notice everything goes from the left to right pan, which is kind of cool, but maybe not the effect you want. Um, so to combat this, it's probably easier if I do explain this with delay. 
So that's essentially what's happening, but just in the the hi hat to the end of that pattern string is it's adding a delay. Um, if I want that delay to apply to both these different playback rates and different pannings, I could create a user group that uses the same values. So now the delay of zero would apply to 0.9 and 1, and a delay of 0.25 would apply to 0.9 and 1. We can save some typing and just do this. So this creates sort of like a a second level group, um, but only has one item in it, um, which is contains both these values. So when it's doing a delay of zero, it looks for the first item in rate, which is actually 0.9 and 1. And then when it goes to do a delay of 0.25, it looks for the second item in the rate, which there isn't one, so it goes back to the start, which is 0.9 and 1. So if I do this for the pan as well, it'll solve our problem. So spinning between the two pans. So if I put delay back to zero, and put the hi hat, it solves our problem. So it's just something to uh, look out for because this is actually grouping uh, the characters together, similar to here. Um, so if you want to have a look at what other effects you can add, you can print the player attributes by doing print dot print player dot attributes and you get a whole bunch of things here um, which I will cover in depth in another tutorial um, but yeah thank you for watching and hopefully you found this useful see you next time